The Tony Award nominations were announced May 5th. Among the Best Actor nominees are the four stars of Yasmina Reese's hit play, God of Carnage. They are Jeff Daniels, Hope Davis, James Gandolfini, and Marsha Gay Harden. They portray two sets of yuppie Brooklyn parents who meet to settle a brawl between their children. By the end, they too turn infantile. The New York Times says, never underestimate the pleasure of watching really good actors behaving terribly. Their performances, quote, incite the kind of laughter that comes from the gut as involuntary as hiccups or belching. Here is a look. What do you mean made aware of his responsibility? I'm sure your son is not a savage. Of course Benjamin isn't a savage. Yes, he is. Alan! <laughs> Why say something like that? He's a savage. Well, how does he explain his behavior? He doesn't want to discuss it. But he ought to discuss it. He ought to do any number of things. He ought to come here. He ought to discuss it. He ought to be sorry for it. Clearly, you have parenting skills that put us to shame. We hope to improve, but in the meantime, please bear with us. <laughs> come on, it's an idiot. Let's go. Daniels Davis, Galafini, and Harden are also distinguished actors outside the theater. Here is a look at some of their past, present, and upcoming work. Any objection to me being next? Next? Uh, do you have an appointment? Does it look like I planned this? So you're a new patient. I just need you to fill out this paperwork at... <sighs> You can't do that. Um, I'm gonna take your picture because that's what we do with all new patients. Okay. When I can stand, I will kill you. Oh, come on, you don't wanna be a tennis pro. Why not? It's not serious. I mean, McEnroe, Borg is an artist. It's like dance. Connors has a brutish brilliance, but at Ivan's level, Ivan is fine, but he's not a serious guy. He's a Philistine. What's a Philistine? It's a guy who doesn't care about books or interesting films and things. I felt abandoned because you abandoned me. I'm sure that we talked about that in, in our sessions. Oh, did we? Mm-hmm. Then how come that last day I, I, I sat there on your couch, devastated? Uh, Mia, I was moving with my family to Maryland. I couldn't leave. You told me I had to. I want to hear that psycho babble crap. If you don't want to hear it, you are the poster child for the DSM-3. Mm. I'll have you know I come from a very dysfunctional family, Harvey. I can spot a personality disorder miles away. Hello, Joyce. Is Harvey home? Borderline autistic. So you are going to kill me. I look. If everything turns out fine and Jerry comes through without this all getting funky, I don't think that'll happen. He brings me the pistol, I give you to him. I'm just here to regulate funkiness. The case against war is far stronger than the case for war, and the case for war is caveated all to hell. I mean, look at this. Most analysts believe the state is looking to expand aggressively beyond its borders. So then you look down at the caveats. The only source is Iceman. Exactly. A possible alcoholic. He probably does 10 bags of methamphetamine a day, the Iceman. If he even exists. Dave came back to the apartment covered in someone else's blood. What do you say, huh? Uh, that he was mugged, that he he bashed the mug's head in the street, that that he might have killed him. I met you before, you know. It was maybe five years ago. A loft dance. You were six sheets to the wind. You cut in, you stepped all over my feet. Yeah, got it, right. You were falling all over me. I am pleased to welcome them all to this table. Congratulations, first of all, on all these nominations, and great to have you here. Thank you. Thank I you. saw the play and liked it very much. Uh, the story is you went to London, saw this play, and said, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Why? I love the play. I thought it was funny. I thought it was short. <laughs> an hour and a half. I <laughs> thought it was. Yes. People came out of the theater. You were looking for a short play? Well, uh, I don't know, why not? It doesn't hurt to hit home um, at 10 yeah. o'clock. Yeah, people came out of the theater. They were alive. They were interested. They were laughing. And there was a lot of energy 
uh, coming out of the theater, and I said, this is something that I'd like to be a part of if I want to go back to theater. And I have to admit that it wasn't a huge um, stretch for me. Why do you and say I've, that? Well, because, you know, it's something that I saw that I, I said, I, you know, I, I understand this. I, I, little did I know that it was a lot more difficult than I thought. But looking at it, I said, this is something to come back to the theater with um, instead of some, you know, costume drama and a funny hat. So, so you probably wouldn't have come back to the theater unless you'd seen something that really... Oh, no, absolutely. It had to be a new play, and it had to be something that I, I really wanted... Uh, uh, maybe, well, a comedy, essentially. And this isn't only a comedy, but it's something that I wanted to do. I didn't want to come back and uh, view from the bridge or something like that. What brought you to this? James. Did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really? Well, um, James was the first one in. James is the reason why uh, he mm -hmm. got the ball rolling, even though he's being modest. It's true. And my agent had seen it in London and said, this is a really funny play that mm. starts out sedate, and you don't know where it's it going. Sedate, and then, right? you know, the, the blank hits the can, and it's really funny, and you're <laughs> on the floor laughing. And he said, there's a part for you. Or yeah. vomiting. Or vomiting. Well, it's something. <laughs> everything hits the can. And so he said, this is a really great part for you. You should meet Matthew. And when I met Matthew and understood, you know, what was beginning to happen. Matthew Warch is Matthew Warch is the director. Yeah, I just, I had read it. I thought it was a very wonderful, very funny. I thought I could do something with it. And after I met Matthew, I thought this would be something fun to come back to. You once said, Jeff, that you play the arrogant ass and Jimmy plays the yelling ass. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. that's actually true. The arrogant ass and the yelling ass. You play the yelling shrew and I'm the vomiting shrew. So, I mean, what brought you here to this? Uh, I was the last one <clears throat> aboard. The three were on board and I saw, I said, these were actors that, that are known as actors, not stars or anything. These are people that are fearless. You look at their work, they will do anything. Um, and you want to work with people like that. You want to work with people that take chances. and. Uh, you know, I read it and said, um, I don't know how to do this. And after a lot of movies and, and a long career, it's like I want to do things that I may fail miserably at. And that was the reason I took it. That and the fact that I, I knew I was going to be in a room with, with a bunch of people who would, uh, who are known for an acting style yeah. that is that uses each other. Is there anything about appealing about the idea that the, all the actors are on stage essentially all the time? There is one scene, uh, and so you are for an hour and a half, a short play, the center of everything. Absolutely. I mean, for me, that was a big appeal. For all of us, uh, Jim and Marsha and I have not been on stage in about ten years or so, and it. We all wanted to come back to the theater for various reasons, but part of what drew me to the play is the idea that no one of us has to carry the play for three hours screaming and yelling and, you know, the other three bringing in the coffee, that it was really four actors going at it, carrying this thing together, uh, in your ensemble. Uh, mm -hmm. Your character <laughs> says that he is a Neanderthal and that marriage is the most terrible ordeal that God can inflict on you. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> so, what, what, what does that tell us about him? Um, <laughs> that he's had a hard time of it for quite a while, and uh, he's been shoving down some emotions, and he he has had enough in his own mind. Your character is, as I said, the arrogant ass. Your character is somebody who walks out, and we think anybody who uses his cell phone that much, two things happen. He reminds of somebody we know, and two. It's dumb and infuriating. Yeah, I mean, we've and all rude. sat it's next rude. to Well, it might be a little bit. Um, and what? And rude. And rude, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's a phone call. i got to take it. The, uh, <laughs> we've all sat next to that guy on the plane. Exactly. Who fills the cabin are, with his importance. Or are, are on yesterday on the train. On and the, mm. they do not realize how loud their voices are. They don't care. They don't, they care. don't care. That's true. They want and maybe they want you to them. know just how important, how important they are. Well, I said to my producer, do you think he knows that we're his hearing everything <laughs> that he says? <laughs> he said, that's the point. Yeah, that's point. <laughs> <laughs> My husband, husband once said to that person on the plane, we can hear all of your conversation, and it's not that interesting. <laughs> For all the details of your life, it is not that interesting. <laughs> now, does your character have anything in common with his character who's described marriage as he did? Yeah, I think we have some allegiances that we kind of come to over the course of the play. I, I, I think what's interesting for me is that I start out on page one. I'm already there. I'm already telling you what I think. I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, the, I'm telling the truth whether you like to hear it or not. Yeah. And, and, and they all kind of come to that. They all kind of, you know, in their own, at their own speed, they end up 
suddenly, by about the middle of the play, everybody's telling the truth now. But I kind of stand out in, in the way that I'm kind of cut into the chase real quickly in the play. You, you have the most physicality. Yeah. She goes airborne. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a word for it. Physicality. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's a better word? Uh, crazy. Crazy. Life force. <laughs> Outrage. What? Yeah. So um, tell me about your character. Oh, gosh. It's hard. In her view of marriage. I'm telling you, it's hard. I think she really cares. I think she's really community-oriented. She believes that um, that with, through discussion and through that there's a right way to handle things. But she's. I, I discover more and more every day that there's a falseness about her that I didn't know even at opening. I didn't know when you came. Maybe uh, because I needed to invest in her righteousness. She's mm. very, very righteous. Right. And the play is too couples coming together to discuss an altercation between their children and they end up behaving worse than the children behaved um, and so she ends up she's very against violence in any form but she's the and first yet, one to throw a punch she's the first one to throw yeah. it yeah. she's very frustrated she never mentions that about her character and then, no it's true <laughs> no, but, 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 it's, but it's very um she's f tamped down too she's frustrated too and she's in a marriage that has been a lie a lie the thing well, that in a way that He's been. She's. She's forced a kind of behavior of civilized behavior from her husband that he hasn't wanted, and they've they've not been truthful with each other. And she's. I just heard for the first time that I say I've been steeped in it for months. I never heard that months was months. To me, it was. She I began to reinvestigate. Maybe I really haven't spent all the time that I think I have that I thought I had in Darfur. Which is the interesting thing is that the play is alive. It's changing all the time. It's getting deeper. We have to think as we're doing the play: is this a, a fat calorie, a, a good calorie, a wasted calorie? You know, when, when you're doing the laughs and as mm. things are changing, and for me, it's always it's deepening. It's just trying to deepen it and understand it better. By the end of the play, everybody's ten times more interesting than when the play began. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for better or worse. Right? True. That, that's something I love about the play. I, I think part of the reason the play is so interesting to watch is as when the curtain comes up and the play begins, three out of the four of us, you are true to yourself all the way through, are presenting mm -hmm. the person that we want to show to people. We, we've made up a, a type of personality and said, this is who I want to be in society in the world. And in fact, that's not, it's hiding all of the things that we truly are. And over the course of the play, you see all of those things revealed. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not pretty on anybody's part. What are we experiencing here? Are we experiencing um, people revealing their true character? Or are we looking at everybody has their point of rage? Yeah, everyone has their point of rage. I don't think I th it's not their true character. I don't think we're ever revealing an entirely true character. It's just a breakdown of, of uh, patience. I think, and, uh, I, and, I don't think and tolerance. And yes. tolerance. I think that you know, the next day they'd feel differently. Well, and tolerance is a really good word because the play does have political implications and does have mm -hmm. other implications uh, and and metaphors. And we have, I say, let's not mix up the victims and the executioners. Right. Might is right, and so that's one of the underlying, the underbelly themes. And, and references to Darfur and to Darfur. references to the, the art of coexistence. And right. you always think of the Republicans and Democrats and reaching right. across the aisle, and then you see how badly it goes here, reaching In across the aisle. In a microcosm of family. Right. Mm -hmm. And what do you want the people to, Jeff, you said something earlier, what do you want people to leave the theater with, other than a good time, feeling well, like they spent an hour and a half well? I agree with Jim. I, I mean, aside, aside, from, um, aside from just the escapism and the enjoying an evening at the theater, um, uh, that they're talking about it, that they're, they're um, I think, I think, like Jim says, I think it's, there are things about these people that are in all of us whether it's a point of rage or uh, intoler you know, tolerating things to the point that you, it's that picking up the rock and underneath exactly. that. Yeah. And I think, uh, I had one guy come up to me a couple days ago and say, uh, you know, my wife and I saw the show and uh, we said, uh, we gotta sit down and talk or we're gonna end up like this. And he goes, no, you guys, in a very strange way, put our marriage back on the right track, or at least we're trying. And because so it, we started talking. Yeah, yeah, because it's all, it's those little things, and I think that's what Yasmina has done so well, is that it starts out with this very civil kind of, and then just little 
things start to, mm -hmm. to, to the, it, you know, one of the big lines of the show is uh, Michael, is Marsha's line to Jim, is that every word you're saying destroys me, or, you know, and it's, and it's true, but, but we build up to that, and every marriage, every re relationship has those little tiny things that, if left alone, can end up mm -hmm. becoming God of Carnage. I love the thing you just said, because you know when you can go visit a couple and you're a guest at their house, but you know they've been in a fight? But Ooh. no one, they're not fighting, but Ooh. you know. No. What you were can... those behaviors that they did that you know? And that's the first 20 minutes of the play is a study in that. Yeah. It's like a little mm -hmm. miniature picture studying that. And Matthew, Wartis, the director, has asked us not to point at anything. So there'll be teeny little actions. And this is the fun of this play for us, is the craft of it, where you just can give a little hint away that we're in a fight about that hamster. Yeah. <laughs> Henry was in a lot of pain last night. He was being driven crazy by the noise that the hamster was making. And to tell you the truth, I've wanted to get rid of it for a while now. So I said to myself, okay, that's it. And I took it and I put it in the street. <laughs> now, I thought they loved gutters and trains and all that, but I guess not, because it just sat there, paralyzed on the sidewalk. <laughs> now, they're not domestic animals, they're not wild animals. I really don't know where their natural habitat is. You dump them in the woods, they're probably just as unhappy. So I really don't know where you're supposed to put them. You left it outside? He left it there and tried to convince Camille it had run away, but she wasn't having it. And was the hamster gone this morning? It was gone, yes. <laughs> and I dragged him out that. of his very important <laughs> meeting at his office to yeah. be here, and he doesn't right. want the to be here. The hamster was wonderful, though. That was one great it's creation. Yes. Yeah. Poor, poor hamster. Now, that's interesting. Do the laughs mo mainly come where you expect them to come? Or different times. I mean, there's, there's a few s set places, yes, but mm -hmm. they come all different times, depending on our energy, I think, that evening. Yeah. And, you know, right. how you hit something, if you hit... So exactly it varies right from night to night nose. because of your energy and maybe the... And the audience is... And the audience. As he always says, it's a fifth character. It depends on their energy and what they laugh at. Oh. That's and why live theater is so exciting. Yeah. But explain that to me. I mean, they, you will be good the same or better because of something in the audience the, the what they create some kind of air energy. and energy that well, you can play to yes. off of from or around or around yeah. um, <laughs> in the case of last night yeah yeah i mean it's just you're, you're you're it's not that you expect the laugh here or you want it there you 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 go for it there it's just it's not there, and so now you now we're still. Uh, and Matthew said a great one of those great pieces of direction. Direction one of them was that the play that you're doing is not the play they're watching. So continue to drive the pain, drive the darkness, drive the anger. You know when she says, you know Michael, every word you're saying is destroying me. We're not. If this we're if close the living room off, we're it, it's not funny. It's not funny for them. Right, 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 right. But it, they're laughing right. hysterically. Uh, so, so, the, so the play you're doing is not the play they're watching. Don't get because they're watching they, because a wild they bring, comedy and right. we're doing. Don't very, get caught doing the play they're watching. That's right. Don't or do you'll a be wild back comedy. in rehearsal. Right. We're not playing right. a comedy. And when we do, but, play but a comedy, you react to what they do and say. You ride the horse. Doing it right. There's a horse. They're the horse. Yeah. Mm. Well, the horse really yeah. is us, but but it's it's, <laughs> it's uh, help me with a metaphor. Yeah. But it, but, it's, but it, they're there, and so you use them, and you know that if we grab the rum here, now it's going to happen there. I think they're um, the cart, and we're the horse. Cart's good. Yeah, I'll go go with we'll cart. go with cart too. You know, there's that moment when Jeff. Um, you think he's going to comfort my character, and he chooses not. Where he do, maybe it was never a choice, but he doesn't. And the audience is surprised. Sometimes the, you're, we're doing the thing that they would want to do in their mind because my character's yeah. been a pill. She's been a pill and they're so up, they don't love her. And this moment he doesn't do it. They cheer. The meaner sometimes we are to each other, the more they're involved, but but it's not, and they laugh at it. Because, Meaning they want you to get your comeuppance? I think, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned several times the director. I mean, how did the director influence the way you saw this? Or was it mostly from the text? Um, I'd or, say or your he own was experiences. huge. <laughs> so he was, and how so? Um, he, a, he had directed it before. He knew it a lot better than I ever could have. He um, guided us along. He, he is a great director. He understands 
timing and um, he understands comedy and he understands mm -hmm. comedy and he, you know he did say mm -hmm. the one thing he said was uh, you don't want them to laugh here because that breaks the tension yes you could get a laugh but you don't want it just keep it going keep it going and you'll give them the laugh later I mean all that kind of stuff that I you know I just came from this very visceral point of and I you know then I started to learn a lot. Yeah. So you know what amazes me about this conversation is what goes into theater, what goes into acting, what go, is a whole range of things, as you mm -hmm. said, about holding the point. I mean, it's just, it's stunning. I don't know whether we're better off we don't know that, mm. or we would find it even more interesting uh, as we learn more about what happens. I think happens. Something, something's good, you forget about all that. And you're just watching. I, 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 you I, I, shouldn't you know, be thinking yeah, that it's a complicated yeah. task for us. Yeah, right. In yeah. other words, you just lose yourself. In, and if you're good, I will only see your character, if especially watch, you. If I watch a good movie, you're in, sucked into the yeah. movie, even if I know the people. And mm. It's not working so well, you start picking it apart, and um, I think, like anything else. I think yeah. one of the things that makes Carnage so good is that we, we don't let you see under the hood. Right. We don't let you see the work. We don't show and tell. Right. It's just people behaving so that by the end of it, if we're lucky, you think that this is definitive. This is, a, I can't think of anyone other than Marsha or Hope or Jim in these roles. And, and if you walk away with that, then we've, we've uh, done a good job of hiding the, the work mm. and the craft and the mechanics of what we do. When you look at this play and it goes from France, it goes from Paris, and did, then was, there was a showing in London, there was a play in London, then it was mounted here. Clafouti stayed. Mm -hmm. yes. Why? <laughs> we may have Why? talked about that for an entire day. I mean, 24, we've, we've had so many conversations about Clifudi, you cannot mm -hmm. imagine. So why did it stay? Well, because we don't have anything in the American, we, Cobbler just didn't cut No, it doesn't do it, does it? didn't work it. Buckle sounded silly. We tried every baked Crumb good cake. under the sun. Crumb cake didn't do it either. Crumb cake, buckle, cobbler all went by the wayside. And we, pineapple upside down cake, you know, we had to have a word that sounded exotic. And some people in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, they know what Clifudi is. Mm. Do you know what Clifudi is? No. You've never had Clifudi? I'm delicious. sure I have, but I just didn't know I was having it. <laughs> yes, you've had it, I'm sure. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. It's great to thank see you. each of you. It is a re remarkable uh, tour de force. In fact, all the reviews say this is a play in which the actors have really made it. I thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.